Hello there everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Daniel and today I'm going to explain and talk to you about how exactly to set up your first fly fishing gear. In this video I'm going to explain a little about the rods, the reels, the lines and, and exactly what you need to do and, and how you need to do it in order for you to start fly fishing. Um, basically, I know that uh, fly fishing can look like, uh, like one of those sports where there is an insane amount of knowledge that goes into actually going fishing, but that is not the case. With a few basic and, uh, and, uh, and easy steps, you can start your own fly fishing adventure very, very easily. So, as I said, there is a lot of different uh, components to, to this fly fishing and I have lined all of these different parts up here and I'm going to talk very shortly about each and every one of them and explain uh, the, how, how these uh, parts fit together. The first thing I'm going to talk about is, of course, the, the fly rod, which is, of course, a very essential uh, part of fly fishing. Um, fly rods comes in a very, very big and wide range of, uh, of, of sizes and shapes and, and colors and all, of the, all that sort of thing. Um, but the main thing to, to think about when, when, when you want to, to go out and get your first fly rod is, is to, to know what type of fishing you need. Because like in conventional fishing, fly rods are uh, divided into different, uh, different categories that relates to what type of fish you want to use. Basically, in fly fishing, the, 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 the general principle uh, behind fly fishing is we are fishing with relatively small-sized lures, small-sized uh, uh, flies, and these flies are not heavy enough, uh, don't have enough weight on their own to actually be able to cast them any distance. That is why, uh, with, uh, with fly fishing, that you actually use the line to cast these small, small baits for you. And that's the general principle in fly fishing. That's why you need, a, you need a specific rod, you need a specific line and a specific reel in order to achieve this goal of casting these relatively small flies uh, as long as you can and present them to a fish. So as I was saying, uh, a fly rod is, 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 stands apart from, from, uh, from other types of, uh, of, of rods, from conventional rods, that it has the reel attached very, very close to the end of the rod. This is in order to balance the rod, um, but, uh, but also because you, need, uh, you don't need anything to hold with the second hand. Um, and, you, and you only cast these with one hand, so, so that's the design uh, about that. Fly rods come in a broad variety of different, uh, of different line, line classes. And in general, uh, there, is, there is fly rods ranging from uh, uh, class 0 or, 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 or uh, line 0 to about line 14. Um, uh, both of these ends, both the 14 and, and the 0, is, is, uh, is very, very specific rods. And, and the, the most used rod in the entire world is a class 5. Those, this classification system of the lines is basically what weight the fly rod you're holding in your hand casts most efficiently. Kind of, exactly like if, if, you have a, if you have a conventional rod that, has a, 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 that casts from uh, you know, 10 to 13 grams or something like that, you will know that it will cast lures and spoons like that in, in that weight range. It's the same with the fly rods. They typically just only have one figure on there. So this is the rod I'm going to use for all the casting demonstrations and all the fishing demonstrations. And it's a very nice and the most uh, general purpose rods for, for the Danish fishing. It's a 9 feet class 6. Um, and as I said, for, for trouts and, uh, and, and most fly fishing, the, the, the most popular fly fishing uh, throughout the world, uh, the most sold uh, types of rods is 5, 6 and 7 weights. Uh, from, from 0 to 4 is extremely, extremely light and very, very specific uh, rods used for the lightest of fly fishing. 4 is for dry flies and, and smaller nymphs. 5 is, is dry fly, maybe a bit bigger water and nymphs and, and small streamers. 6 is, is streamers. You can do some big water dry fly fishing and, and stuff like that. But also you can, with a 6 weight, you can, you can fish for, for, let's say, uh, let's say uh, you can fish for bass, for instance, and, uh, and stuff like that. And the further up the scale you go, the heavier the line gets and the bigger the flies and the more windy conditions the fly rods can handle. Uh, an 8 weight is, is used a lot for, uh, for pikes, 
um, and uh, and salmon and and big sea trouts and stuff like that, sea bass and and coastal and saltwater fishing. And as soon as you get above eight, then those rods are typically for for either really really big freshwater species like like pike with really big flies, or they are specific to use for. Uh, for, for, for saltwater, tropical saltwater species like bonefish and permit and tarpon and stuff like that. So, so when you start up with this, of course it depends on where you're located, uh, but, but for, for trout fishing in general and, and for the most of fly fishing, as I said, the most sold rod in the entire world is a 9 feet class 5, and, uh, and, uh, and this, this, uh, this 9 feet class 6 is a good starting rod. So you need to figure out beforehand uh, what exactly is it you want to target and, uh, and of course get a rod that is appropriate to the species and the fisheries that you intend to, to start fly fishing uh, in. Um, a lot of these rods comes uh, very handy in four pieced. Uh, four pieces uh, rod is, is by far the, the, the most uh, common uh, throughout the world. You can get two piece rods, but typically the two piece rods is, 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 is a lot of the time it's, it's, it's really budget rods that perhaps you should uh, consider um, getting something a little, a little more expensive and a little better. Um, the fly rod is important for your casting of course and, uh, and depending on conditions and, and, uh, and what exactly you want to fish you can, you can get a fast or a medium rod. But for, for casting a bit of a distance and, uh, and with the, the type of, of, of graphite that, that is used in these rods, most rods are, are either semi-fast or fast um, nowadays, anyway. So a little about the rod. As I said, yeah, I, I could talk for hours about, uh, <laughs> about fly fishing rods and the difference between this, this rod and that rod and, and that model and, and so on. But, but um, in order to get started, all you need to know is, is the things I just mentioned. The next thing we're going to talk about is the fly reel. And basically the fly reel is, is, is designed to be a place to keep your line while you fish. So um, for the most part of, of what you would call traditional fly fishing, you know, trouts and, and bass and, and, and all, all, all that type of fishing, grayling and rainbows and, and all that. Um, the main thing about your reel is that it, it's, it's, it's sturdy and it's durable and it has a decent break. Uh, when you start fly fishing, the one place where you can actually, uh, where I would recommend if you should save on anything, then you should save on the reel. Um, unless you're fishing for tropical sea salt water, but, but <laughs> you probably won't start with that. Um, so the reel is, as I said, not that essential because basically it holds the line and um, at least here in Denmark and, and most of the places when you start fly fishing, you will not hook up to a true monster that will you know, drag a hundred meters of, of line from you and stuff like that and, and a, a, a half an hour long struggle with the fish. So basically, if you have a, a fly reel, uh, it is designed to hold the line while it's not in the air or while, while you, you don't use it. So a decent, a decent priced reel. This is the reel I'm going to use in this video. It's a Lamson liquid reel and, uh, and the price of this is uh, around $100 uh, or, or around 100 euros. Um, and, and you get a lot of, of very decent quality um, for your money with, with something like this. Um, uh, now we're going to switch over and talk about the different lines and stuff like that. And that is perhaps the, the, the most confusing and, and the most, the, where, where the, most, um, the most technicalities and, uh, and difficulties regarding getting started is. Um, when you look at, 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 at a fly fishing setup, you have the rods, you have the reel, and then you have uh, some different lines that are going to go onto your reel in a specific in a specific order. The first thing you need is the backing. This is a line uh, that, you, that you attach to the reel before you actually attach the fly line. Because a fly line is, is the thing that drives your cast and uh, that you used to cast with, but this is only typically around 30 meters long. So if you don't have any line behind that, then if you, if you actually do hook up to that truly, truly monster, you need some line to be behind the fly line. Otherwise, if you're, the fish you hooked swim more than 30 meters away, you would definitely lose that fish. 
So you attach some backing, and this is very similar to uh, to braided uh, braided fishing line or, or something like that. And basically, uh, depending on the species, of course, but but for most uses for trouts and and all that that thing, about 50 to 100 meters of backing will suit your suit your needs very very well. So the first thing you're going to do is to attach the backing to the reel. And I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up with all the nuts and stuff like that further on in the video. Now we're just going to talk everything through. After that, you need the fly line. And fly lines comes is, is available in just a, an insane amount of different, different categories and, and different densities and, and different lengths and stuff like that. But basically, um, there is um, there is a lot of different uh, a lot of different types out there, but for starting fishing, the, the the absolutely best thing in in my opinion that you can you can you can get to start on, on, on fly fishing is a WF line. That is a short for weight weight forward. And basically, uh, the idea behind a line like this is you have a part of the line that is that is heavier, that is thicker, and that is basically the weight that you cast with. You could kind of say that a fly line like this is designed like a 10 meter long or approximately 10 meter long lure. Um, and then you have 20 meters of, of thinner line that is actually just going to follow your 10 meter long lure while you cast with the fly. So it has, it has a, a belly section, the portion of the fly line that has the weight. And then behind that is a thinner part of the fly line that basically is, is designed to be thin and as you cast the fly, it will just follow through the guides all the way out to where your fly line lands. Um, there is a lot of different uh, stuff, but the WF line is the easiest to set up. It's the easiest to start with. And if you go for something uh, with something uh, that is as general purpose as possible for the fishing that you need, um, then, then you should try to go for that because when you start fishing, fly fishing, let's say you go to, to a trout stream and you want to catch some trout, then you don't know if, if you are going to be very specific to fish a lot with dry flies or to fish a lot with streamers or to fish with a lot of nymphs or to go, you know, bass fishing with bigger flies and stuff like that. So, so a fly line with, with a belly around 10 meters is something that I would recommend that can be used for most things. It depends, of course, a little about uh, uh, exactly where you fish and stuff like that. And and as always, I urge you to to go out to your to your local fly shop or <laughs> swing by my fly shop that is called NordicAnglers.com, um, and uh, and uh, and seek out some advice regarding exactly what it is you need to to get your started. Um, so now we have the the rod, the reel, the backing, and the fly line attached. And the next thing you want to attach to this is the leader. The leader is basically, um, uh, you can get these in all different size of lengths and materials and stuff like that, but basically it's, it's a piece of, uh, of, of monofilament line that is, uh, that is tapering. So it, it's relatively thick in one end and then it gradually tapers down to the, to the, to the tip of this. And, uh, and the reason why it tapers down, this is nine feet and nine feet is, is as standard as you can get it. Uh, the reason why it tapers down is because when you cast and your fly is at the end of that, you want the correct um, transfer of power from your fly line all the way out to the fly so that when you cast and, and you, you, you release the line and it flies out there into the horizon, of course, uh, you want the, 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 com the, the correct power transfer from the fly line to the to the actual fly so that the fly is the thing that lands the furthest away so that the leader is 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 is, is straight um, this also works uh, because the fly line is is so uh, so thick and and uh, and dense uh, you of course need something to to uh, to move your fly away from this relatively thick uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, yeah, the, the fly line because the fly line will cast a shadow and stuff like that. And there, that's also why you need the leader. So now you have attached the leader to the fly line, and because the leader is is tapering and is is is, is designed for this, it costs a little more than just your regular uh, three meters of uh, of monofilament. So you attach a tippet to your leader, and basically you buy a spool of some some decent quality uh, uh, nylon or or fluorocarbon. And then you tie a meter of this to the end of your tippet. 
because this way you will save a lot of money because it will be the the the, the tippet that will take all the the worst abuse and uh, and you will get everyone gets uh, you know wind nuts every now and then and and then you have to change it because that drastically uh, uh, diminishes the the strength of, of your line and basically so so in order to save on this you you tie on a tippet on your on your on your tapered leader and then uh, then you can replace that every now and then uh, as soon as you need to um, so when you buy your leader you buy it in something that that ends uh, um, in in a diameter that that suits your needs but it's a bit thicker because then you you attach an even an even uh, thinner uh, tippet and uh, uh, for instance this is 0 0.28 uh, this is i think it's it's 0 x uh, and then i have uh, a 1x leader on uh, on uh, on the tippet so so my tippet is is 1x and my my leader ends in 0x again to make sure that the power is transferred correctly to the fly I think that's about it. That's to sum it up. You have a fly rod, you have a reel, you have backing, you have a fly line, um, and you have the the leader and the tippet. There was actually one crucial thing I forgot to mention about the fly line, which is which is is kind of important, and that is the fly line is the absolutely most crucial part of your fly fishing setup. I know that fly lines are expensive. A line like this is, is 100 bucks or, or 100 euros, something like that. And that is a lot to pay for basically uh, 30 meters of something you could use to dry your clothes on. But there goes an insane amount of technology and an insane amount of designing into making a fly line like this. And um, a good example on how, uh, of, of how important the fly line is, um, I was once you know, at, at a fair where we, uh, after, after, after all the customers had gone, we just played around in the casting pool. And I cast an entire fly line with the top section of a spinning rod that cost around $25. And that was only possible because the fly line was of great quality. If you take a good fly line and put it on a substandard quality uh, fly rod, you will be more successful than if you take the most expensive, most top shelf, most advanced fly fishing rod you can get and then buy the cheapest fly line to that you're, you're gonna cast longer with a good fly line and a really bad rod than with the best rod and a very very bad fly line because the fly line is so essential to this so as i said if you want to save money someplace you should do it on the fly reel you should never ever ever compromise when it comes to the fly line it's the most essential part i think that's about sums it up uh, the rod, the reel, the backing, the fly line, the leader, and the tippet. And now I'm going to show you exactly how to put these things together. And after that, we're going to go outside and I'll show you how to cast with your new fly rod and reel and line and leader and tippet. <laughs> so now the time has come to actually put all these different parts together. And, uh, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that with all the different uh, nods and stuff like that. Um, but uh, again, we're going to use one of the fly fishing uh, quit kits that we have in, uh, in, in, at Nordic Anglers. And if you buy one of these from our shop, we will have done all of this for you. But it's very, very nice to know exactly how to do this on your own as well. So I'm going to show you exactly how to mount your fly rod and get it ready to go fishing. The first thing we need to attach is, is the backing and, uh, and I'm going to show you the knot in a second but I need to explain something about the fly reel first. When you have a fly reel like this you have of course the brake knob here at the, at the, at the, at the back of the, of the reel and when you tighten this it only affects the, the, how, how difficult it, it is to, to, uh, to reel in in one direction. It's always easy if you're right handed to reel in but uh, the drag affects uh, the, the way that the, 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 the tension in, in the opposite direction and that's how the brakes works. So if you're right-handed you want of course to when you hold the, the reel in your right hand that it's very easy to reel in but if you tighten the brake then to uh, move the reverse way is going to be difficult. 
If you're left-handed, uh, you can you can change something in the reel, and uh, and uh, and your 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 local fly s shop can show you that, and, and you're gonna have to mount everything in the opposite direction. If you're right-handed, you hold the reel in your right hand, you try to reel in, and it's it's easy, it's smooth. Then that's the way it should be. Then we take off the spool, and of course, depending on what what fly reel you have, there's gonna be different ways of of of, uh, of removing the spool. But here it's on the on the waterworks reel. It's very simple. So basically, I remove the uh, I remove the spool from the reel, and then I make the knot here. Um, it's important that you, uh, of course, test the strength of, of your knots as as you go along, uh, because uh, yeah, you don't want to lose that fish of a lifetime because you you made uh, you made poor poor knots. That's one of the most common ways to lose a, to lose a good fish is if your knots is is not strong enough. And then I hold my reel and of course I will have it in my right hand and make sure that the line comes out from here perfectly. Then I'm gonna mount it on the rod. And then the most crucial thing here is you need you need a helping hand in order to be able to spool this correctly onto your reel. So I have a pencil here, but you know you can have a pen or, or whatever. And it's very important that the line comes from underneath on the on the backing from underneath, and then it goes underneath on the fly reel. So it comes from underneath to underneath. Otherwise, if we did like this, then we would twist the backing half a turn on every single uh, every single uh, time we, we 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 went for a full rotation on the fly reel. So it has to come it has to be straight like this from underneath to underneath, and that's very important, very critical. And it's the same thing every single time, whether you're you're doing spinning uh, rod or or fly fishing. Uh, it has to be like this every single time, or your line will kink. Then you get a friend of yours to hold the line and you can start adding the backing to the fly reel. Now on to the next step. Now we have uh, uh, we have added all the backing to the fly reel and of course it's important that, that you distribute this as evenly as possible all the way or, or, or across uh, on, on the spool here so you don't have a big bulky and bulky part in one side and, and a very thin section in the other side. It has to be, you know, fairly tightly wind on there and as evenly as possible distributed. Then we are ready to the next step and the next step is the fly line. I've just taken this fly line out of the uh, of, of the casing here and then you have this uh, then you have this uh, this not spool but but cassette where where the fly line is on. And uh, and of course the fly line has two different ends. And because this is a WF line, a weight forward line, then there is a correct end to attach to your reel and a wrong end to attach to your reel. And, uh, and the producers of these fly line has been so kind as to attach a small piece of paper, a small, a small sticker here that says this end to reel. That's really, really important and really crucial because if you do this the wrong way, you're not, you will not be able to cast anything. Also, um, uh, most of the of the of the good fly lines are, are uh, produced with with a loop in both ends, and we're going to use this loop to make the next knot in order to attach the the backing to the fly line. The knot we're going to use here is called the Albright knot, and basically, I take my backing, I, I put it through the through the loop in the in the fly line, and then I I. I Basically, I hold it so I have the backing is laying on top of the of the fly line here, and then I I make kind of a small loop here, and then I start to wind the backing back towards the loop, and I do this maybe five or six times, something like that, and um, uh, and I do it on top of both the fly line and the and the backing. Um, and this is the strongest and the best way to attach your backing to your fly line. So now I have about six, uh, six turns or something, uh, something uh, in, in that order. And now I need to, to take my, my backing and, and, and put it down through the loop again. It came from underneath on, on one way and now, it, and now it's going to go the opposite way. Like this. 
Now I can, because I haven't uh, really tightened this yet, I can, I can pull this whole thing all the way up to where the loop ends. Like this. And only when it's all the way up there, do I really start to tighten this. And there you have it, a perfect Albright nut that really is strong, durable, and, and a very, very good connection between the fly line and your, and your backing. I, I leave about a centimeter or something like that um, uh, here still, so, so if there really should be strain on here, and if it, if it were to you know, glide a little bit, I would still have, have a little something. And this is so bendy and, and won't take up any space, so, so this is not going to be a problem. Now I've attached the fly line in the correct end where the sticker is and basically now all there is left to do here is to do exactly the same so as, with as, as before with the backing. Um, uh, you have to have the line uh, uh, emerging from underneath on the cassette to underneath on the reel. This way you will not tangle uh, your, your fly line and you will not kink your fly line. And it's in the correct, uh, in the, tied to the correct end of this. And basically you just have to remove these, uh, these pipe cleaners or what, whatever you call these. Um, add, the, uh, add the friend and the, and the pencil and just start winding away. Then you're good. Now you can see I have uh, added the, the full fly line to, to the reel. And as before, it's very important that this is evenly distributed all the way around the, the reel, all the way across the reel. And that you have some spare room between the, the casing and the actual fly line. So you don't, you know, uh, um, uh, you don't wear the fly line every single time you, 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 you wind it on the reel. In the end of the fly line, as I said, there is a loop. And, uh, and now we're gonna attach the leader uh, the leader to the loop. Because I made this video in Danish just before I, I did this English one, I have already removed this from the packaging. But we're gonna take the nine foot leader and then we're gonna make a loop to loop connection. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to make a loop on the, on the thick end of the leader. That's very important. You have to do this on the thick end of the leader. So basically, um, a perfection loop is a knot um, uh, that's fairly simple, uh, but it's a bit difficult for me to show you exactly because the, more, the, the, the fluorocarbon here is, is, is so see-through as it is. So if, if any of these, uh, these nuts that I'm showing here, if you did not completely understand how I did them, then you should just search here in, uh, in YouTube on the name of these nuts and you will find some very, very gifted and skilled other people who will show exactly how to make these nuts using some very thick and very colorful, uh, different colored ropes and stuff like that. So it's, it's absolutely impossible not to, to get it right. In some of these nuts, there is a built-in uh, safety, uh, 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 safety tip um, regarding how to, to spot exactly, but I'm, I'm just gonna make it now. So first I, I, I fold the line into a loop behind itself then I do it in front, then I take the, 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 the end here and fold it in between the two loops, then I pull the front loop um, uh, in through the, 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 the loop that was uh, furthest away from me. Then I take my pencil again or my pen or whatever and then I tighten. And, and the way you can actually check if this knot is, is done correctly is it has to, the, the end here has to come out from the, from the, from the knot in a 90 degree angles, uh, angle, not angles, angle. And if it does that, then it's made correctly. If it doesn't, you have to redo it. I'm gonna cut off the, uh, the, the end. And, uh, and then I need to mount this onto, onto my fly line. So I take my fly line, I put my fly line through my, uh, my loop on, on, the, on the leader. And then I put the rest of the leader through the small loop in the fly line. This will give me a loop-to-loop -loop connection here. So, and that is a really strong, really, really uh, good connection. And basically I just pull this tight, like so. And you have, have a strong, durable, uh, f very, very simple way of connecting your fly line to your leader. There is a lot of different other ways of doing it. And uh, if you want to experiment with this, I recommend the needle knot, but this is by far the easiest uh, and, uh, and the fastest way to get this done. So I'm going to take the other end of my leader here, the, th the thin end, 
and I'm gonna attach a tippet to that. You know, basically, the 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 tippet is is on the spool here. I already have uh, about a meter of this, and in order to attach this, then I'm gonna use a, a blood knot. So I cross the two lines, the tippet and the leader. Then I then I twist one of them around the other. And as you can see now, there is a V down here. So I take the tip of this, and fold it into the V. I change hands. And then I fold the other one around, you know, uh, the other one. This will give me, uh, not a V anymore, but kind of like you can see how it's twisted all the way around. And then one of the, my, my first one is coming from underneath and going up. So the other one has to come from up and going down. Then I hold these two together. And then before I actually tighten them, I moist the leader a bit and then I tighten it slowly, not too fast, because when, these, uh, when, this, when this nut is tightened, if you do it too fast, then there will be a lot of tension and a lot of heat. And this heat can, can damage uh, the, actual, the actual leader. And basically, there you have it. The blood knot and um, all there is left to do now is actually to uh, to go to uh, to where you want to fish um, uh, put all four parts of the rod together put your line and your leader uh, through the guides start uh, attach a fly and then go fishing um, so we have now talked about exactly what it is that all these different parts of, of a fly fishing setup uh, consist of exactly how to put the different things together um, uh, in order for you to go fishing. In, uh, in, in another video, I'm gonna explain a bit about the very, very basics of fly casting, both from the water, but also from, you know, just, just, uh, just a field uh, to, to give you a sense of, of, uh, of uh, an entry level uh, introduction to, to how to, to move your fly rod so you will able, actually be able to put your fly out into the water. Thank you so much for watching. As always, um, the, my channel here is, is, uh, is Nordic Anglers and uh, that's also the name of my webshop where you can buy all the different stuff that you would ever need for any type of fly fishing. Thank you.